Hey, welcome to the channel. Every now and then I get asked about the difference between React.js and Ruby on Rails. So in this video, I'm going to explain what those differences are and help you decide on why you might choose one over the other. Now, because that question packs a lot of nuance under the hood, I want to start off by saying there are multiple reasons why you might choose a language or framework that don't have anything to do with its capabilities. Things like popularity, for example, a lot of people base their decision on the number of jobs available on the market. Others might look for ease of learning so that they can get up to speed faster, while others might be interested in the community around the framework or the performance, etc. These are just a few things you might consider while choosing your language or framework, but I'm not going to look at any of these in this video. What I am going to look at is the practical difference when it comes to building projects with a single page application framework like React and doing the same thing with Ruby on Rails. And by practical, I mean what does it take to get from nothing to something you can ship to your users. So the first thing we're going to look at are the conceptual differences. Ruby on Rails is a full stack framework while React.js is a front end framework. So what does that mean? Well, let's take a look at what the stack is all about. The stack means all the elements that are required to deliver a full page to the user's browser. You'll often hear about full stack development or full stack developers, which means the developer is writing code across both the front end and the back end. The front end of the stack is the code that runs inside the user's browser and its job is to generate a user interface and handle the user's interaction with that interface. And then the back end of the stack consists of web servers and databases and third party APIs, etc. Most things that have to do with processing data in some way or another. But at the end of the day, it's about generating a web page. The front end and the back end complement each other to generate a response to the user's actions. A full stack application or website could be as simple as just a static HTML page that doesn't do much or it could be incredibly complex incorporating various technologies to respond to the user's request as fast as possible and with a rich and dynamic interface. If we were to list some of the most popular technologies involved in each side of the stack, we'd see something like this. On the front end side, we'll see things like JavaScript, CSS, HTML, which can be expanded to include frameworks like React or Angular or Vue, among other things, as you can see here. On the backend side, we'll see languages like Ruby and Rust and all sorts of databases and concepts. The point is, there is a lot that makes up the full stack, with even more technologies popping up every day. So if you want to deliver an application to a user, you need to go through most of what you've seen here. If you're thinking about applying for a job, then the decision might be easier because there's not that much to lose either way. But for solo developers or small startups, covering all those elements of the stack can be the difference between making it or closing shop. So a framework like React.js covers just a tiny bit of that full stack. It's concerned with just the front end part of it, namely generating the user interface and handling user interactions. That's not to say that it's easy, it's just that it covers a much narrower surface area of the entire stack. But it does it in a way that is highly customizable and highly interactive meaning you can build things with React or most of the single page application frameworks that it would be much harder to build with a more general purpose framework like Ruby on Rails. It also depends on other services or backends. It cannot do everything on its own unless you're building a very simple application. In other words, if you're building an application with React, you'd need to either use existing APIs to fetch your data from and send data to or build your own backend. But with Ruby on Rails, you can build a full stack application on your own because it enables you to build across the entire stack and even across services like email or scheduled jobs, etc. And it's got a lot of code pre-built for you so you can build an app from scratch much faster. That's actually where Ruby on Rails shines. It's probably the fastest way to build an app as a solo developer or a team with very limited resources. The way it does that is by generating the entire page on the back end and giving it to the browser. It also uses some clever technologies like Hotwire to make that process very fast and dynamic. So at the end of the day, if you want to build a complete application, you'd have to build across the whole stack. And a framework like React doesn't do that. You'll be building just for the front end. But with a framework like Ruby on Rails, you can build everything and even sprinkle some React on top of the Rails app if you want to. So you're not tied to just the out-of-the-box rails. 
The choice is obviously not just about the capabilities, but also other subjective factors that I've already mentioned at the beginning of the video. So choosing one over the other is not an easy answer, although if you can learn both, you get the best of both worlds with almost nothing to lose, except time. If you want to specialize on just the front end, go with React, and if you want to be able to build a full stack application all by yourself really quickly, go with Rails. I hope that answers some of your questions about Rails versus React, and if you have others, feel free to post them in the comments. Bye!